Hello, everyone. Now, welcome to the webinar. We are doing it first time. I hope you will like it, and I hope I make the time worth for you for coming today. Now, the theme of this webinar is happiness. We decided to talk about this topic because I get a lot of questions from people. So we are going to talk about happiness today. Uh, you will see the screen. You will see some points we are going to talk about today. And uh, later on, we'll give you a handout. So you will also have these screens with you and you can keep them. So first question is, what makes you happy? Now, some of you might remember it from the classes. I sometimes talk about it in a class. And uh, maybe some of you have not heard about it. And some people have forgotten it. But I think it's good to talk about it again. So what makes you happy? I often ask this question and I ask people to think of something what makes you always happy. Hmm? Think of something. And yes, one thing. I highly recommend you to make some notes. So when I'm talking and if you like something, you find it interesting or you want to remember it, just maybe pick up a pen and paper and so you can write it down. Because I will speak about a lot of things and there will be some points you will want to remember for later on. And also when I ask you questions. So the first question is, what makes you happy? Now, when I ask this in my classes, I get these kind of answers. So I have put some here. Spending time with family. So a lot of people say when I'm spending time with my loved ones, with my parents, with my children, with my brothers, sisters, I am happy. Some people say when I'm walking in the nature, spending time in the nature. Some people say lying on the beach makes me happy under the sun. Some people say when I'm dancing, I'm happy. Some people say when I'm listening to music, I'm happy. Some people say when I'm traveling, then I'm happy. So many th people say different things. Yeah, you might also have some of like this. You might say also maybe coffee makes you happy. Yes, maybe movies make you happy. Maybe popcorn makes you happy. Or yes, maybe chocolate cake makes you happy. So everyone has different ideas of things what make you happy. But what I want to say here is Normally, what we think makes us happy does not necessarily makes us happy. Often, first we get confused between pleasure versus happiness. Sometimes we are having pleasure and then we think we are happy. So if you look back at the list, spending time with family, it is actually pleasure. Walking in the nature it is pleasure. Lying on the beach, pleasure. Yes, so what is pleasure? Pleasure is fulfillment of senses. When your senses are getting fulfilled and you're enjoying your senses, we get pleasure. So spending time with family, walking the nature, lying on the beach, dancing, pleasure gives you pleasure. Listening to music gives you pleasure, your senses get fulfilled. But it is not happiness. It is nice, we want it, but it is not happiness. Why? First thing, because pleasure is always temporary, short-lived. When you are eating chocolate cake, the pleasure stays when you are eating chocolate cake. When the chocolate cake is finished, pleasure is over. Sometimes, the pleasure in the beginning is more and it starts to decline very fast. For example, you are eating a big pizza. You are very hungry. You are waiting for a pizza. Pizza comes. You have two slices. And after you are full, now you are not enjoying this pizza. It's not giving you the same pleasure like before, like the early slices. Yes. Dancing, listening to music, same thing. They give you pleasure, but the activity is over. Pleasure is over and now we are thinking, what next? How do we continue to have this pleasure? So we keep going from one pleasure to another pleasure to another pleasure. And that is not happiness. So pleasure versus happiness. Pleasure is fulfillment of senses. I think that is clear now. 
there's no harm in having pleasure but we should always know that pleasure is temporary and it will finish happiness on the other side is fulfillment of expectations yes so when your expectations are fulfilled then you have happiness expectations so when someone says coffee makes me happy for example what they are actually saying is that all my expectations are met my health is fine my family is fine my job career is fine my love life is fine and i'm enjoying myself with a nice coffee you understand a lot of expectations are there which are in back of our head we don't know them we don't know them now this also depends your ex how much expectations you have yes higher amount of expectations lower chance of happiness lower amount of happiness expectations higher chance of happiness because let's say you have six expectations in back of your head five are fulfilled but one is not fulfilled when this one is not fulfilled you will not feel happy you will feel sad for example you are in the nature traveling enjoy yourselves and you get a call that your child had an accident he's in hospital yes now you cannot be happy even when your other expectations are fulfilled you are free you are in nature you are traveling but one expectation that your family is not well suddenly you become sad so we have to know what are our expectations if we want to be happy yes and that's what we are going to talk about there are six pillars of happiness so there are six categories of expectations we have in back of our head some of them we know some of them we don't know and it's good if we know them and then we think about what do i expect here otherwise what happens is that you Sometimes you feel maybe in your life that you have everything, you're in a five-star all-inclusive hotel and you don't feel happy. You feel something is missing and you cannot name it. You don't know what it is. You have everything. You have time, you have good food, good weather, but you feel something is missing, not happy. Something is really missing. So six pillars. First pillar is health. I'm going to explain all of these in detail. So just right now giving a brief. First pillar is health. Second is career or productivity. Third is your relationships with everyone around you, friends, family, love life, spouse. Leisure, fun activities, hobbies, spirituality, connecting with yourself and lifestyle. So there are six pillars or six categories of expectations which need to be fulfilled so you can be happy now i have put them in number one two three four five six but there's no number as such they're all equally important if you have five fulfilled but six is not fulfilled you will not be happy if other four are fulfilled, two are not fulfilled, you will not feel happy. So order is not important, okay? They are all equally important. So now what is important is that all of them are fulfilled. Yes? Let's talk today about health. Hmm? Now, everyone knows health. Health is fitness. Health is being healthy, not being sick. But why is health so important do you need to be healthy yes because if you don't have good health you cannot enjoy anything else in your life you cannot enjoy your career you cannot enjoy your relationships you cannot enjoy enjoy your free time your leisure you cannot enjoy your spirituality 
because health is important for this physical body, mind and soul. So health is very important. You cannot ignore health. So you need to know what kind of health you expect. In order to be satisfied and happy, you need to know what kind of health do you expect. Now, normally we just think about fit, physical health, but there's some bit, bit more to it. I call it complete health. I mean, I don't call it Ayurveda. In Ayurveda, there's a concept of complete health. So today we will talk about the pillar health and in upcoming seminars, upcoming webinars, I will talk about each pillar separately in detail. Yes. So today only detail of health. So what is complete health? Complete health in light of yoga, in light of Ayurveda, so we can say holistic health. Now, I have something for you to show here. Okay, here. You see this? What is this? Okay, I would like to call it mango. Okay, I know it is orange, but I don't have a mango. I would like to call it mango. So you have to visualize now. This is not orange, this is mango. Okay? Mango, mango, yellow mango, not orange, orange is a yellow mango. Okay, because it's easier to explain the mango. That's why I'm saying mango. Now, let's say this is mango. Okay, this is mango. When you look at this mango, what do you see? Is it a healthy mango? You think it's a healthy mango? Looks good. I can eat it. Yes, looks healthy. Why? Because what we see from outside, the skin looks healthy, right? But tell me, if inside the pulp is gone bad, if the pulp is gone bad, will the skin look good? No. Yes. So inside pulp has to be good in order to be the skin to be good. And let's say inside there is a seed because it's a mango. So there are not many seeds, but one big seed. If that seed has gone bad, will the pulp and the skin be good? No. Let's say the seed has rotten, the pulp has rotten, and I try to put some paint and color and polish and some cream and some shampoo and some mascara on this mango to look it good. Yes, is it good? Will you eat it? No, you will not eat this mango because it is not healthy inside. So in Ayurveda, we have the concept of three bodies in Ayurveda and yoga. And when all three bodies are healthy, then we call it a complete health. So these three bodies are first is physical body. So what you see in a person, yeah, all the flesh and blood. Second is astral body. And so astral body is energy body. So the breath, the pranas, all the energies, if you want to use a broad word, chakras and nadis and everything is astral body, the senses. Then there is spiritual body. Yes. So spiritual body is inside body. I'll explain a little bit more about them to you. So physical body is made up of five elements now the five elements are earth water fire air and ether ether is emptiness or you can also call it space i will repeat earth water fire air and ether yes so the whole body is made up of these five elements. So if you look at my teeth, my teeth is basically bone. Bone is made up of earth and all. Yeah. So everything, it looks different from outside, but inside it is made up of that. It's like when you look at a vase, vase is painted, colored, but it's made up of mud. Okay. So that is physical body and physical body is the tool body. So if I want to pick up a glass and drink water, I need this tool body to catch the glass and drink the water. Okay. 
So this is tool body. Like when you want to put a screw in the wall, you need a screwdriver. You cannot put your finger and put the screw. You need a screwdriver to put the screw in the wall. So screwdriver is the tool. Even when your hand is doing all the work, the screwdriver is the tool which is required to put the screw in the wall. Physical body is the tool body. It's going to help you do what you want to do. So fitness of physical body is very important. Second is astral body. Now astral body is energy body. In energy body, we have 19 elements. So first we have five senses. So five senses are, you can always see on your face, touch, taste, smell, hearing, and sight. Okay. So touch, sense of touch, feeling, taste, sense of smell, smelling, hearing and sight. So these five senses are in physical body. They are not in astral body. Uh, they are in astral body. They are not in physical body. So don't get confused. Sometimes people say or they think that I see with my eyes. No, we don't see with our eyes. We see with the help of the eyes. Okay. We see with the help of the tool eyes physical body gives us tools eye is a tool so if you want to see you don't need your eyes actually because the action of seeing is happening in the astral body you can try that if you want you can close your eyes and you can see a white elephant standing outside your door not outside your apartment door but outside your building door and eating strawberry ice cream yes in a big white bucket and he is wearing a big hat red hat so white elephant strawberry chocolate white bucket red hat you see it open your eyes so who saw your eyes or something else but we need the physical eyes to see it because they bring us light and blah blah for example i have these glasses so let's say i remove these glasses and i cannot see properly yes because let's say hope yeah luckily not let's say my eyes are very weak and they don't see so i need a tool to see and i put the tool and i see the tool helps to see but that does not mean that the tool is seeing make sense so similarly five senses are in astral body then five actions are in astral body five actions of the body um, i will not go in detail in that it needs a bit more time to explain and today i have limited time so i will not explain that then we have five pranas in astral body so we have different kind of pranas which do different kind of functions generally we you know we say energy but energy is not just energy like energy in a battery is different than energy in an apple. Make sense? So similarly, there are different pranas which do different functions in the body. And these pranas are also in astral body. Yes, normally called udan, uh, pran, saman, vayan, apan. Okay. Now we have next. So five uh, senses, five actions five pranas and now four inner instruments so these four inner instruments are like you know in your computer screen computer you have some instruments inside some things for example ego ego is in astral body okay so what is ego i will say about it here ego what is ego sometimes people say ego is ego is my pride okay sometimes people say ego is what I think of myself okay people say ego is what other things of me okay what I say ego is attachment to your ideas 
so you have a lot of ideas and the degree of your attachment to those ideas is ego your ego more attachment bigger ego less attachment less ego hmm? i give you one example let's say i have an idea that i am very good looking really really good looking okay let's say i have this idea now i ask someone what do you think am i the most good looking man on this earth don't laugh now they will say no okay they'll say what you are old and bold what is good looking about it so if i'm attached to the idea that i am very good looking my ego will get hurt because my idea is proven wrong yes if i'm very attached i will have a big ego about it if i'm less attached less ego about it not attached to the idea no ego about it okay so that's ego then second is subconscious subconscious is your memory bank all the experiences of our life are stored as memory and that is subconscious from this life every single experience is stored third is intellect intellect is capability to analyze capability to analyze so we have intellect how we analyze fourth is mind okay fourth is mind now mind is bundle of the thoughts so the collection of the thoughts we have in our head that is mind so this is astral body next is spiritual body spiritual body is the inside so if you remember the mango the skin is physical body which is protecting everything inside inside is the pulp the real stuff the astral body what is actually valuable what is important we buy the mango for the pulp remember the next is spiritual body spiritual body is the causal body which is the seed body the seed is the cause of the pulp and the skin yes so spiritual body is causal body spiritual body has the soul in it spiritual body has karma account what you have to give what you have to get spiritual body has free will the power to choose you can make a choice you made a choice to be here today hmm? next fourth is samskar samskar is essence of learning or wisdom from all the lifetimes so subconscious was memory bank memory of this life samskar is essence of learning from all the lifetimes or essence of memories from all the life so these are three bodies and when all these three bodies are healthy then we are completely healthy if you only make your physical body healthy by working out going to the gym but you don't take care of your energy body you cannot be healthy if you don't take care of your spiritual body you cannot be healthy so you have to take care of the all three bodies now physical body what is the health of physical body hmm? now in physical body your hormones should be in balance your nervous system should be in balance and for that we do asana now looking at from ayurveda perspectives ayurveda has a beautiful theory of health it says physical health is achieved when all doshas are in balance so we have three doshas remember vat pit kaf or you can say vata pitta kapha so when all these three doshas are in balance in balance how they should be i'm not saying all equal i'm saying in balance then you are having good health your digestive fire your metabolism should be in balance so your digestive fire should be working good not too much not too less your metabolism should be in balance not too much not too less you often hear some people say i have very high metabolism i have very low metabolism yes so metabolism should be balanced 
then all seven tissues of the body there are seven tissues of the body like bone blood so on they should be in balance they should not be produced too much they should not be produced too less so not too much fat not too less fat not too much blood not too less blood in balance and all the wastes systems so body has waste expelling systems they should be working smoothly without disruption so according to ayurveda there are four principles of physical health which are dosha in balance digestive fire in balance seven body tissues in balance and all waste expelling systems working smooth or in balance yes so here ayurveda can help us to achieve proper health in these parts and yoga can help us to achieve hormonal balance and nervous system balance yeah so in older time these days of course we have modern yoga styles and there we focus more on the physical body outside body but or muscles and bones but in asanas in yoga old times we used to focus on hormonal balance so we were holding poses or doing poses to stimulate the glands so they create and secrete hormones in balance and we were focusing on balance of the nervous system now nervous system especially ans pns so autonomic nervous system or we can also say peripheral nervous system and sympathetic nervous system we also need the balancing both so often we have either too active parasympathetic or too active sympathetic yes uh, i don't think i have to go in detail in these maybe uh, you know about it i think so sympathetic just in brief sympathetic is active when the body is under stress parasympathetic is active when our rest system is active so for example if uh, or you can also say fly and fight and fly or rest and digest is nervous system of parasympathetic but fight and fly is nervous system of sympathetic yeah now asanas help by the squeeze and release principle yes and asanas help to work on chakras to create the hormonal balance and working on the glands to create the balance and in the end resulting in the balance of the nervous system because we need to use both we need equal activity of parasympathetic and sympathetic so if you remember the asana class uh, if you have done class with us or somewhere else so first we do kapal bhati stipulates the sympathetic nervous system then we do anulom vilom stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system then we do sun salutation stimulates the sympathetic nervous system then we do headstand activates the parasympathetic nervous system so in traditional practice of yoga we keep going from parasympathetic to sympathetic because we need both but what we really need to learn is to be able to switch from one to another at will because we have lost this capability because of extra stress so that's why we go in the bed 12 o'clock we want to rest but cannot rest body is not resting body is contracted mind is fully active awake hmm? so ayurveda and yoga help us in detailed uh, you can say bringing the balance in all the parts of the physical body or all the systems of physical body hmm? So I will move on from here, coming to astral body. Astral body was once again five senses, five actions, five pranas, four inner instruments. Now in yoga we do pranayam and pratyaha. So astral body is energy body. Now we need to have balance in energy body to keep it healthy. Sometimes you feel your energies are too much, too hyper, not in control. Yes. So for that, we need to do pranayam. Or then sometimes you feel your senses are not in control. You cannot 
focus on anything you feel too much you hear too much you're always distracted for that we have to do pratyahar and for complete health of astral body we have to have a peaceful mind hmm? so i will explain a little bit about mind mind was remember bundle of thoughts so if the mind is not calm in control if your senses are not calm in control you will not have health or good health of your astral body so the key points of astral body health is your senses in control and your mind in control normally our senses are not in control for example you go to work out you want to go gym and you are going to the gym on the way you see a ice cream shop giving very nice sundays yes and now when you are doing this you see this ice cream what happens you want to eat it hmm? sometimes you say okay let me have little bit one scoop and i will run a bit longer yeah i will maybe do more cardio but let me enjoy the ice cream but once you have eaten the ice cream then you don't feel like working out because you feel heavy you feel relaxed and then you say okay maybe i go home today watch a movie and tomorrow i can work out double or i will come on sunday extra but that sunday extra never comes so you understand how senses divert us from what we want to do here maybe the meaning of pratyahar is not clear pratyahar means withdrawal of senses inwards so normally senses are busy outwards you know the colors are out the smell is out the taste is coming from outside thing what you hear is coming from outside and in pratyahar we bring the input less i will explain that slightly differently you have done flotation tank or maybe you have heard about flotation tank so you lie down in flotation tank is closed you don't hear anything you don't see anything is dark you don't smell anything you don't feel anything you are just floating on heavy salted water so your senses are not getting new input so they start to relax and then you fall into deep sleep because they relax yeah and that is pratyahar so you bring your senses inwards so they calm down okay that is pratyahar once again pranayam pranayam was the expansion of prana so pran ayam expansion of pran in the body now how can you expand the pran in the body is by expanding the ability to retain prana prana is you can compare it is not oxygen but you can compare with oxygen that prana comes and goes we use some of it and some just goes like we breathe the air and it's 20% oxygen but we don't get all 20% oxygen we breathe in a little bit we retain a bit about 6% rest all goes similarly prana there is prana everywhere but we are not able to retain it we retain a little bit rest goes so in pranayam we want to improve our capacity so the astral body has more prana available more energy available to do the activities to repair and all of these functions so pranayam is expanding the capability of retaining the prana now this can be done by through different breathing exercises that is easiest there are many kinds of pranayam exercises but the breathing exercises are easiest because we can easily control them right so normally people say breathing exercise is pranayam but not completely correct to say and then we have pratyahar controlling the senses uh, by controlling the senses or by controlling the input you calm down your senses and by doing it regular you learn to keep them in control you see a chocolate cake and close your eyes and you are not worrying about it yeah you can ignore it yes next is peaceful mind when the mind is peaceful then also we have good health now question is how to make mind peaceful 
you, to make mind peaceful, you, we have to develop concentration. We practice concentration to control the mind, and the controlled mind becomes peaceful. Yeah, maybe you have read the book uh, Yoga Sutras, and there's a beautiful verse, very famous verse. It says, "Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodhak." Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodhak. It means yoga stops the movements of the mind movements of the mind because our mind is not peaceful by nature yeah that's why sometimes uh, in some books they use the term monkey mind like a mind monkey is always jumping around it never stays still yeah always jumping around you can also see with small children they never still they're always busy 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 with something busy with other thing same thing is with the mind mind is not completely in control so we practice concentration to start to bring mind in control what is concentration concentration is bringing the mind to one single point of focus you can have an object and you are looking at it now you're completely focused on this object nothing else you are feeling using all the five senses to feel this to see this to hear it to connect with it you're fully focused on only one object now it can be a mango or it can be a candle it can be a mantra it can be your breath it can be anything as long as you find a single object where you are going to focus fully that is concentration and by practicing concentration regularly yeah practicing this mindfulness practicing this bringing the senses to one single object regularly you will double and you will be able to retain your concentration longer and longer if you try right now if you take an object and you focus on it what you can maximum focus will be six to eight seconds and then mind will think something else you can try six to eight seconds you will be able to focus maximum and then something else will come of course some people who are practicing meditation or they are practicing concentration regularly you can concentrate longer but general public six to eight seconds and then the mind goes choo -choo. by regular practice of meditation regular practice of concentration exercises mindfulness you begin to bring the mind to the peace now i will talk about spiritual body uh, spiritual body soul hmm? now the thing is we cannot directly access our spiritual body so we cannot influence it easily physical body easy you take your hand you stretch it you are stretching it okay Spir but spiritual body is complicated hmm? that's some high stuff spiritual body can be controlled or can be purified we can say by vivek and viragya now i will explain here vivek a bit to you vivek means capability to differentiate capability to differentiate differentiate this or this black and white red and yellow day and night differentiate okay so vivek is capability to differentiate now question is differentiate between what colors gender weather no we are talking about here spiritual body the soul so the soul needs to learn to differentiate between real and unreal okay so real and unreal the main problems for us or for the soul is when it forgets what is real and what is unreal and starts to get busy with unreal hmm? when we forget what is real but we start to think what is unreal is me and then you start to get 
affected by it that is the major cause one of the five main causes of suffering and vivek helps to clear that vivek is knowing what is real what is unreal so for example now i will try to give you a bit more information here so uh, is this mango is it real or is it unreal is this mango is real or unreal what do you think how many of you say real how many of you say unreal okay so this mango is unreal okay this mango is unreal but you will say yes but we see it i see it i touch it i smell it yes okay but understand now everything has two things one is the matter what is it made up of the water the earth the sunlight second is the shape or the form so this has a form of an app mango the form of the mango let's say orange come back to orange it's easy now i'm getting confused myself so this is an orange yeah let's we say now it's orange change on switch so uh it has form of an orange so we say this is an orange right so when you but form is actually not real because form depends on who is looking another example what am i wearing t-shirt polo something something like that correct everyone agrees i'm wearing something and this is maybe a t-shirt or something okay now everyone agrees this is the truth that i am wearing t-shirt no not correct to you it's a t-shirt but for a moth you know the moth who insect who eats clothes for him this is food a buffet of food party so for you it's a t-shirt for him is food who is right he might think what a stupid man wears food we might think what a stupid insect eats cloth and that's where our realities differ because we are forming our reality based on the form not what is it actually and you take a ring wedding ring you say this is a gold ring yeah this is my ring no this is not your ring so if you give it to me and you say hey keep it for some days i will come back and take it later and i beat it up make a coin out of it and you come back and you say hey my ring i give you back the coin you will not take it you will say no no this is not my ring this is a coin i give you a ring are you getting it so we identify things with their form and when you get vivek you start to realize first thing that the form is not real the form is changing and changeable so you don't believe in the form anymore you know it is what i see it's not the reality yeah that is vivek first thing the capability to differentiate so now you understand that everything which has a form is unreal and what does not has a form is real what does not has a form the soul does not has a form okay so real soul unreal everything which has a form now question comes how do you practice vivek how do you practice vivek because the whole concept is that the soul understands vivek and then it starts to calm down and become healthy you understand so otherwise the soul behaves like a child who is throwing tantrums all the time because he does not realize is that he is in a school not in a party yes so how do you practice vivek you remind yourself what is real what is unreal daily you remind yourself what is real and what is unreal because we tend to forget yeah you remember today but tomorrow something happens you forget right now we say yeah 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 but if your iphone is lost or 
fall, uh, fallen, unbroken, you say, oh, my phone, my phone, ah, you will forget it's unreal. Now, second thing is, that's why Vivek and Viragya comes together. Viragya means dispassion for unreal. Dispassion for unreal. Because unreal is temporary, always changing. Only real is permanent. And Viragya is dispassion for real, which is permanent. So, when you go to a hotel, you take a room, for five, six days. After five, six days, you are asked to leave. But what? Do you go or you stay? Or do you say, hey, this is my room. I love it. This is my room. Nobody else will come and sleep here. No. You don't get attached to temporary. Because it's a temporary accommodation. So you don't get attached to temporary. Yes. But what if you get attached to temporary? Imagine. Imagine you go to a hotel and you take a room for a few days and afterwards you don't want to go. You are holding the bed and you are saying, I will not leave. This is my room. Nobody else will come here. What will they call you? Crazy? Yes, exactly. Crazy. So when we do same things with unreal, we are also crazy. The things which are temporary, which are bound to go and we don't let them go, we think they are we have to stay with them, they should not go, they are also crazy. And that's why spiritual body becomes crazy, the soul becomes crazy. But when you have Vivek, you understand what is real, what is unreal, and you don't have attachment to unreal. You use it, you enjoy it, but you know it's temporary. So you have a nice car, you take care of it, you drive it around, but you know this is temporary. It is here today, it might not be there tomorrow. Yes, so enjoy everything you have, but remembering this is temporary. Whatever exists will go. What is your house will become someone else's house. You understand? What is yours will become someone else later. What is someone else might become yours. Everything is temporary, changing form. Your children are not yours. Today they are your children, they are dependent on you. But later on, they will go. They will not be your children. They will be your children, but they will take care of themselves. They will spend much less time with you. So when you realize everything is temporary, you enjoy it, but remembering it is temporary, you develop Virag. Yeah. It is there, it's okay. It is not there, it is okay. When you come to that state, then your soul is in balance. In health. When you're not there, you're worrying and running around after temporary, then your soul is not healthy. You are always having stress, you're always having pain and suffering. So in short, if you want to make spiritual body healthy, Vivek, Viragya and meditation. Meditation also helps us to realize who am I, what is real. Yes. Okay, so I have a question here. What is the difference between happiness and joy? Very good question. There's a difference, big difference. Sometimes people get a bit tied up in the words, so I will explain it. Happiness is always based on expectation. If this is fulfilled, I am happy. But in joy, we also call it peace. Peace is not based on expectation. Peace is based on acceptance. This is also okay, that is also okay. So in expectation, you expect something to happen, when that happens, or it stays like that, then you are happy, it gives you happiness. Peace is absence of happiness actually. Peace is presence of joy. So when you are accepting everything, then you get joy. This is fine, this is fine. Next question is, are pleasures bad in general? No, pleasures are not bad in general, but getting attached to pleasure is bad. We are always seeking pleasure. It becomes our nature to seek pleasure and that creates problem because not always the coffee will be nice. 
Sometimes you will get a coffee in a restaurant, you will say, oh, bad. Sometimes the waitress will be rude and give you coffee with rude attitude. Sometimes the pizza will not taste nice, it will be burnt. So you will not always enjoy or get the pleasure. And when you don't get the pleasure, it will make you suffer. So have pleasure, knowing is temporary. Enjoy it. Don't expect it 100% there. If it's good enough, it's great. Uh, couldn't, okay, how can I find consistency in controlling my senses? Sometimes I get for a few days or a few weeks and then there is a lag again. Very good question. Hmm, problem of the monks. So senses are very difficult to control. Yeah, so we have senses, they go out of control. What really works, what my teacher always used to say because I had the same question always from him. Some days you can control your senses and then they go out. Think of yam and niyam. By practicing yam, so first yam was non-violence, truth, non-collection, uh, non, uh, brahmacharya, non, uh, not uh, extra, how you say, so uh, truth, satya, non-collection, non-stealing, no, not indulging, so not indulging too much. If you think of five yams, I will say again, non-violence, truth, so following truth, of course, I'd have to explain them in detail, otherwise I cannot right now, uh, non-collection, non-stealing, and not over-enjoying. When you do this, then senses start to come in the calm. We are, senses always go out when we want something. Yes, think of what you want and why you want, and if you don't get it, then it's okay or not. But yes, it's a challenge. I hope I could explain it in short time, but yeah. Our body is a form, so we are unreal. Correct, very good, we are unreal. When I say we, means me and my body. So the soul is real and the soul is actually not the body. I soul has the body, like I have this t-shirt. Now this t-shirt is not real. I have it because I need it. Yeah, but this is not me. That's why I will change it. It goes bad, I throw it, I put a new one. Similarly, soul does it. Body goes bad, leave it, get a new body. So soul is real, bodies are changeable. Body change all the time, young, old, yeah, keeps changing. So we are not unreal, but if you think I am me and my body, then you are making yourself unreal. When you think I am the soul, the observer, then you are not unreal, then you are real. Okay, what is the difference between Satya and Vivek? Correct. So Satya is truth. Now, very interesting thing first is what is truth? What is truth? Now, truth is what is universally true. Normally, what we think is truth is our own truth, right? Our own side of truth. But actually, truth is what is universally true or the complete truth. Vivek is only understanding the real. You can say for Vivek you need truth, of course. You cannot have a live in lie or not have the idea of reality, truth and understand reality. But Vivek is slightly higher level because Vivek is about everything. Is it real or unreal? Or you can say Vivek is more about understanding the difference between the form and what is behind the form. Like we look at a tree, we say this is a tree. We don't see it is a soul and five elements. Yeah. Similarly, truth is what is real, what is true for everyone. So they are quite close with each other, but Vivek is really focused on form, understanding the form, real and unreal. Truth is what is complete truth, true for everyone. Right now it is 8.30 in Holland. This is not true, but 8.30 in Holland, two o'clock in America, that might be true. Can the soul change? Good question. Um, the thing is, soul does not change, but the samskar change with it. You understand? The soul itself does not change. The samskar change. Uh, it's like this. Let's say uh, a person, he becomes poor, he becomes rich. He becomes poor because he lost money. He becomes rich because he gained money. But the person actually is same. 
if you he, nothing has changed in him only his pocket became light or heavy similarly the soul always remains same but soul always uses some scar to think to see to behave and that some scar goes less and more so you can say soul does not change but the attributes of the soul the karma the free will the samskar they change constantly i hope i was able to say some things give you some points to think about and give you a bit broad view of health and of course i understand it's a lot of information but maybe you can make some sense out of it thank you very much bye bye thank you